Voting gets underway right now all across America. Americans going to the polls, casting their ballots. The first polls close in just five hours from now. We're going to be watching at 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. Florida, for example, closing at 7. There's a rager, mm -hmm. razor thin margin separating these candidates. So clearly the race could go either way. I'm Trish Regan. Welcome everyone to the Intelligence Report, a special election day edition. Here we are, voters flocking to the polls right now. More than 46 million Americans have already cast their votes, and the decision is going to boil down to turnout today. Can these candidates, with, let's face it, some pretty high negatives, get out the vote? It's all going to come out to turnout. Can Key battleground states, there's a handful of them, and we have team coverage across the country. Right now, Jeff Flock is outside a polling station in Ohio, where the lines have been long. Robert Gray is out west in Colorado, where a series of western states could be the deciding factor. I want to go to both of you, but let's begin in Ohio. Voters there braving some long lines to vote today. Polls closing in about five hours from now at 7.30. No Republican has ever won the presidency without winning Ohio. So, Jeff Flock, what are we in store for as you watch in Columbus? We have had huge turnout all day. We're in a little bit of a post-lunch lull right now at the Tremont Elementary School here in Columbus. Uh, but it, is, it has been big turnout, and they're reporting that across the state. Take a look at Cuyahoga County. As you point out, Trish, turnout is huge. Uh, it's huge for both candidates. But in Cuyahoga County, they're now predicting between 67 and 70 percent. That would top what happened four years ago with President Obama uh, in his reelection bid. Uh, and the Republicans are positive. They're feeling very positive. The chairman of the Cuyahoga County Republican Party says Donald Trump will get more votes from Cuyahoga than any other of the 87 counties in Ohio, and it will be Cuyahoga eventually driving a Trump win on Election Day. Important to know, Trish, that he's doing this, we think, without help from the Republican governor of Ohio, John Kasich, who wrote in the name John McCain as his candidate. You can't do that here in Ohio because he's not a certified candidate. It's a wasted vote. Other people would point out, while some are mad at Governor Kasich for that, other people say, what if he was the nominee? And he'd stayed on message the whole time. The economy, growth, and there hadn't been a bunch of foolishness. He'd win by 70-30, they think. Maybe. We'll see maybe, how it turns out. Maybe. Uh, the one thing you got to hand Donald Trump uh, is that he has managed to get out the vote in terms of rallying the base. And, and it, you know, we'll, we'll see True what the that. autopsy looks like after uh, and whether or not he wins or not. But uh, it, it, this is one for the history books, for sure. People will be writing about this for decades. And here we'll we are living it this. today with all our viewers on the front lines. Jeff, thank you so much. All right, turning right now to the all-important state of Florida. And the story there, Hispanic voter registration, it is up by more than 453,000 votes, nearly doubling the 2012 level. Could that sink Donald Trump? Our Adam Shapiro has been on the ground in the Sunshine State for weeks, has been looking at uh, all of this early voting data that's been coming in. Mm -hmm. I, what do you make of this one here? Uh, the idea that, that twice as many Hispanics have registered to vote, Adam. Yes, well, the counter to that, Trish, would be that you've had an influx of people from the Midwest who are racially conservative white folk who have moved down to the western part and the southwestern part of Florida as well. So, yes, there is a surge of Latino and Hispanic voting. That's taking place, too, by the way, in Orlando and Orange County, as well as Broward, Miami-Dade, Palm Beach counties. But you really have to wait till we get to 7 p.m. here in Hillsborough County 8 p.m. in the panhandle. The panhandle is strongly Republican territory. It's Donald Trump territory. But let me tell you why Tampa, where I am today, and why Hillsborough County is the bellwether and the key to Florida. Twice in this county, voters have selected George Bush. And twice in this county, voters have selected President Obama. So this county is the bellwether because as it goes, Florida goes. And here's what's happening right now in Hillsborough County. We have roughly 63 percent voter turnout. That's everything from early voting to mail-in ballots to the people voting today. 
In 2012, the turnout was 72 percent. So I was speaking to different sources, and I got a statement from the Republican chairman uh, of the Republican Party of Florida. And what Blaise Angolia told me is that although you see this surge of Latino voters in other parts of the state, quote, we're also seeing Republicans turn out in force today in the state of Florida, including Hillsborough County. We expect that the Democratic ballot lead will be erased by this evening. And that lead he's talking about, as I wrap up, is the lead going into this morning. Democrats had a roughly 150,000 vote lead in early voting by mail and by early polling station. All Trace. right, Adam Shapiro, thank you so much. All right, I want to move west right now to Colorado and to Nevada, both which will be closely watched tonight, both states critical to Donald Trump's path to 270 electoral votes. Joining me right now with a preview is Robert Gray in Denver. Robert, how's it looking? Hey, Trish, uh, very busy out here. Nine electoral votes up for grabs in the Centennial State. Now, keep in mind, this is the first presidential election that people were actually mailed their ballots. So balloting has been underway for about two weeks now. In fact, physical balloting in this vote place where we are right now, which is one of about two dozen in the Denver area. You can see folks, though, still coming in quite busy in here. Hundreds of people have already come in to cast their ballots either by paper. And they also have tablets here as well. You should also keep in mind what's interesting about Colorado, you can actually register to vote and vote today on Election Day. And you can also vote anywhere in Denver County, not just in the precinct where you live. Now, the counting is going to begin in less than an hour's time in the counting room, which Frank is showing you right now. Uh, we'll, they'll also be uh, counting those ballots that were mailed in. Some of them are also being dropped outside. They have a drive through outside, Trish, to help people drop off their ballots on their work. They have uh, several police officers out there as well as election officials. Keep in mind, these ballots will be scanned. There's a tripartisan paid election judge committee at each terminal, basically. That means one Democrat, one Republican, and of course, one independent. Independents make up the largest voting block here in Colorado. And if you see thumb drives on there, well, they, I'm told the computers will shut down if a thumb drive is inserted into that slot. Quick look now at early voting. I mentioned the mailed ballots now. Early voting, about 69 percent of those have been returned. Slightly more Republicans than Democrats, but keep an eye on that independent block. They haven't returned their ballots in as large of numbers, and they are the biggest block. So that's going to determine what happens. Also, we should say very robust voting. They have outpaced the national average in 2012. 2.22 million have voted early. That's almost matching last time's 2.57 million total. So very active balloting here in Colorado. Trish, back to you. All right, Robert, thank you so much. Early indications, everyone, showing few problems for voters at the polls, say for you know, a few sporadic machine problems here and there, and those long lines. That's been a concern, as Donald Trump has warned of fraud and has been a little coy about whether he would concede if he lost. Here's what his son, Eric Trump, had to say about that issue to Maria Bartiromo this morning here on Fox Business. He's always said absolutely, so, so long as there's no games, no funny business, no anything mm -hmm. else. And listen, no, no, no question about it. I really believe we're going to win tonight. I mean, I really, I feel something that's out there right now. I mean, I just feel something that's out there. And I think we're going to take a lot of states that have never gone Republican before. You're seeing that. I mean, we're. All right. The one thing everyone can probably agree on right now is it is going to be a long fight to the finish line. Joining me right now with her perspective on all of it, pollster Lee Carter, along with Ned Ryan, the CEO of American Majority, Jonah Goldberg from the National Review, and progressive radio host, host Chris Hahn. Good to see all you guys. Lee, I, I'm going to start with you. Walk me through what you see as perhaps the most viable path for Donald Trump tonight, starting in Florida. It is a tough path. First of all, he has to win every single state that's been called Republican or leaning Republican. That's not necessarily guaranteed. Then he has to win all four swing states. He needs to win Florida. He has to win North Carolina. He has to win Ohio and he has to win New Hampshire. And then he needs to take one more state and turn it blue. It is not an easy path to victory for Donald Trump, but it is possible. We've seen record voter, tur voter turnout. That blows up the model, by the way, because all polls are done of likely voters. Lo likely voters are voters that have voted before, and we know we're going to have a lot more than that. So then we have to look at who is voting. We've talked earlier about the Hispanic vote in Florida, but we're also seeing record number of working class people going out in Michigan. He could turn Michigan. If he turns Michigan, very viable path. There's also 
talk that he might be able to turn Pennsylvania. That's a neck and neck race. So Wow. I mean, that would be amazing. You know, I've said from the beginning, Jonah, that, that one of the things that has made this election so different is that Americans are so frustrated, frankly, with their economic lot in life. The last eight years have been pretty meaningless in terms of growth. The last 20 years, when you look at wages adjusted for inflation, they've been meaningless in terms of growth. And so parties, as a result, Jonah, they have become increasingly meaningless. If Donald Trump were to take a Michigan or Pennsylvania, does that show you that the parties as we currently know them have effectively dissolved? I don't know if it shows that they've effectively dissolved. Um, I do think you're absolutely right that the parties, there's a, there's a pretty serious disconnect between the party apparatus and the voters. And you can see if, if Trump is successful in flipping Pennsylvania and Michigan um, or either of them, you can see that, that the, there, we're going to have a whole new electoral college map going forward where the Rust Belt states look, uh, start turning red, the sort of high tech states um, stay blue, and the old sort of left, right, conservative, liberal thing becomes less important, and the populist and racial uh, lines become more important. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure it's going to happen, but, I, but if it does, you would say that this was the bellwether for it. Uh, Ned, you know, we saw Hillary Clinton there in Philadelphia, 30,000 right. people showed up. I don't know how much was for her or whether it was just the idea that you got a ticket to a free concert. I mean, you had everyone there. I mean, you had the Obamas, you had Bill Clinton, bon Hillary herself, but Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen, you name it. I, you know, and I, there's part of me that wonders, you know, is this indicative of more of the free stuff? You get a free concert, more free stuff if Hillary Clinton comes to office. And how is the country and some of those states like Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio going to react to that? Boy, I got to tell you, I mean, uh, please, please, let's see what the results are tonight before we start talking about a Hillary presidency, because I think it would be devastating on a variety of fronts. Um, you know, but uh, the, the, the thing that I've thought about with Hillary is, as president, again, you're dealing with judges, you're dealing with Obamacare, you're dealing with, you know, free college. She's I'm listening to her speech last night in Philadelphia. I'm thinking, dear God, who's going to fund this? Right, um, right. It's, it's, it's people. I it's told more my wife, than free it's concerts. It's free college. Right. It's, it's it, it, exactly. Free I mean, you start food. Adding up it's the, all kinds of freebies. You, you start adding up the dollar bills on this, and I looked at my wife the other day and said, you do realize our significant tax bill would go up even more so uh, under a Hillary presidency. And again, you, that's not how you bring prosperity back to this country. So, right. So, you know, I know, so you're, you're hoping that you see Donald Trump there win and, and that some of these conservative economic principles are followed uh, over the next four years. But let me, let me go to Chris Hahn for a moment because, Chris, you know, assuming you know the, the Senate uh, stays in the hands of the Republicans, assuming that you know the Congress stays in the hands of the Republicans, aren't we just going to have four more years of basically nothing? Well, I'm hopeful that the Senate will turn blue tonight, but in case it doesn't, I think there are enough people in the Senate that will want to work with the president and try to get things done. I mm -hmm. also think that there's going to be a renewed effort in the House, particularly by Speaker Ryan and some other people who want to actually get things accomplished to kind of push aside the more fringe elements of their party, work with Democrats who are willing to meet in the middle and get things accomplished. Hillary Clinton Do you think was Speaker very Ryan successful. stays? Because there were those rumors floating out there that he might actually step down regardless of what happens. I don't think he's going to step down. I think he's going to have a, a bit of a fight on his hand. But like I said, I do think there's a good number of Republicans in the House of Representatives that want to get things done. And there are only about 40 or so that really want to stick to their ideological guns. And mm -hmm. I think that if Speaker Ryan is 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 true to his uh, his his nature and wants to actually get things done. He'll reach across the aisle. He'll bring some Democrats along with him. That will secure his leadership. That will actually get things done going forward. Americans right. do but not you want know to see what? a We're Congress like the one they've had. <laughs> we still got four hours and 45 minutes before the first polls close. Uh, we're going to be watching it very carefully. I'm going to be joining Neil Cavuto in his special coverage tonight. That starts at 8 p.m., everyone. So make sure you keep it right here on Fox Business. Thank you so much to all of you, Jonah, Lee, Ned, and Chris. All right, Donald Trump, he's got the momentum, without a doubt, in this final stretch. But is this momentum going to be enough to bring out Republicans who've been on the fence about him? Are they going to come to the polls today? We are asking Michael Reagan, son of the late great President Reagan. He was a Trump holdout, and now he's backing him. That's next. All right, Donald Trump, everyone, coming into this final day of the election with all the momentum. But is that momentum enough to bring Republicans 
who had been on the fence about Donald Trump. Will it bring them out to the polls? Joining me right now with some thoughts on all of it, Michael Reagan, the <laughs> son of the late, great President Reagan and author of the book Lessons My Father Taught Me. Michael, so good to have you here on good set. Welcome from California. Um, why are you voting for Donald Trump? I voted. You did. And okay. you voted, voted for absentee. Trump. Voted absentee. Voted absentee. What, what is it about him as a candidate that uh, caused you? Because I know you, you, there were things oh, about him you been, didn't anybody like. Anybody who follows me at Reagan World on my mm -hmm. Twitter account knows how I feel about Donald Trump. Right. And I said, you know, you don't have to support him to vote for him. Because I would rather have a Donald Trump there than a Hillary Clinton there, because we know the baggage that she's going to bring with her, you know, to four years of the presidency of the United States of America. And that concerns me greatly. It should concern every American. Donald Trump doesn't bring that baggage with him. And I think 